Richmond is a unique and fascinating city and one that I've had the chance to visit on a couple of occasions. As the former capital city of the South, Richmond has a unique history that is significant to both the Revolution and the Civil War. In this series, I briefly cover a city's history, population, skyline, as well as a few things that make that city unique today. Now, let's meet Richmond. I always like to start by exploring how a city wound up being where it is today. Richmond is located at the head of navigation or the furthest upstream boats can travel on the James River. Some of the early inhabitants of the area were the Powhatan people and in 1607 Christopher Newport and John Smith explored the area after settling the first permanent English settlement in North America, Jamestown. There were falls near there making it the head of navigation and a natural spot for a trading post which was established in 1637. Exactly a century later, the settlement would be laid out on Church Hill with the name of Richmond. During the Revolutionary War, Richmond would become the capital of the Virginia Colony, and during the Civil War, it became the capital of the Confederacy. By the 20th century, it was the South's most densely populated city. Today, Richmond has a population of around 226,000 people, making it the fourth largest city in the state of Virginia. If you have watched many of my other videos, you'll know that I think metro population is often a better indicator for measuring a city's true size, and Richmond has a metro population of a little over 1.2 million making it the third largest metro in Virginia and the 44th largest metro in the country, just behind Memphis, Tennessee, and just ahead of Louisville, Kentucky. Some of the recognizable companies headquartered in Richmond include CarMax, Altria, and Markle. There are 10 colleges and universities in the Richmond area, including the Virginia Commonwealth University and the University of Richmond, which has been ranked as one of the most beautiful college campuses in the country. Call me shallow, but when it comes to cities, I think appearances matter, which is why evaluating a city's skyline is my favorite part of making these videos. Richmond's skyline overperforms for its population within the state of Virginia, but underperforms nationally. Richmond is without question the most impressive skyline in the whole state of Virginia. If you took the average height of its tallest five buildings, it would be ranked as the 54th tallest skyline in the country, just behind Memphis and just ahead of Sacramento. The tallest building in the city is the James Monroe Building at 449 feet tall, but the best looking building in the skyline, in my opinion, is the second tallest building, the relatively new 600 Canal Place at 417 feet in height. A lot of what makes Richmond unique among other U.S. cities relates to its history as the capital of the Confederacy during the Civil War. Richmond has a large museum about the Civil War known as the American Civil War Center located in the historic Tredegar Ironworks building. The Tredegar Ironworks was the largest ironworks in the Confederacy and was a significant factor in the decision to make Richmond the capital. There's also the White House of the Confederacy, which was the executive residence of Jefferson Davis, the President of the Confederacy. One of the other aspects of the city related to the Civil War is Monument Avenue. The avenue is a mall running through the city that up until 2020 had several monuments to the leaders of the Confederacy. Most of the monuments were removed, but one that remains is of the tennis champion Arthur Ashe. Two blocks southwest of the White House of the Confederacy is the state capital of Virginia. Architecturally, it's a very unique state capitol building and houses the nation's oldest legislative body. Thomas Jefferson designed the building, which was largely modeled after the Roman temple Maison Carrie. Richmond was home to the first successful large electric streetcar or trolley system. Richmond showed that trolleys could be reliable and safe, and their system set patterns copied by cities throughout the world. And while we're on the subject of rail, I should mention that Richmond has one of only two major triple rail crossings in all of North America. Nicknamed the River City, Richmond is the only city in the country with Class 4 rapids going through its downtown area. It's the only place that you can ride rapids like these in an urban environment. Another historical figure with ties to Richmond is Edgar Allan Poe. The poet grew up in Richmond, and today there is a museum in Richmond about him. The museum has a large collection of original manuscripts and personal belongings. Richmond is home to one of the largest art museums in North America by square footage, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. The museum includes a global collection of art that goes back 6,000 years. 
One of my favorite places that I visited in Richmond is Maymont, which is a 100 acre Victorian estate. It's a beautiful estate full of various gardens, the Maymont Mansion, and even a nature center with wildlife. Lastly, I'll mention that the famous give me liberty or give me death quote was given by Patrick Henry in 1775 in the St. John's Episcopal Church in Richmond. This was significant because it helped convince the 2nd Virginia delegation to deliver Virginia troops for the Revolutionary War. The church still stands today and is a National Historic Landmark. Well, that wraps up my video about Richmond. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and check out some of my other videos about cities. Thanks for watching.